Well, my next guest is commonly known as the Candyman. I prefer to call him Mr Reliability. Once again, he's had a wonderful start to the new season. And I refer to Victoria's star rangeman, Greg Sugars. Well, Greg, another flying start of the season, leading the state drivers' premiership and also your wife, Jess Tubbs, in the top ten as far as the trainers are concerned. Yeah, that's right. No, it's been a terrific start to the season. Um, yeah, I was sort of actually looking at it thinking I might be a bit of a quiet uh, first month or two, but it hasn't turned out that way, which is really pleasing. Greg, from a famous family, as we know, and condolences or belated ones of that as far as the passing of your grandfather, Len Sugars, back in September. What a legacy he led, led as a person, but also as far as the industry is concerned. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, great man. And, um, you know, he, he lived a, a long, healthy, successful life. So, um, yeah, sad to see him go, obviously. But, um, yeah, hopefully his legacy is going to live on for quite some time yet. And, um, yeah, yeah sad, sad to lose him. He was a, obviously a terrific supporter of of myself and uh, I don't think he ever missed a race that I was in so um, yeah sad to see him go but um, yeah he, he lived a great life. He started out as a butcher but when Glow Derby formed he certainly got attracted to harness racing. Yeah that's right um, he sort of started the uh, the Sugars family involvement um, basically as a hobby um, through harness racing and it was quite a successful one at that and um, yeah as time grew and my dad uh, came along that uh, they sort of got bigger and bigger and then dad took it basically as a professional uh, operation from there on in so um, yeah a lot of, lot of history involved there. Yeah certainly your dad Ross took it to a far new level. Yeah he sure did you know he was extremely successful uh, especially through probably the mid to late 80s and early 90s uh, had a lot of success and you know uh, set, set quite a few records along the way so um, yeah he certainly had big shoes to fill uh, or I had certainly had big, uh, big shoes to fill so uh, hopefully I'm on my way there. Oh, you've done that certainly, uh, Greg, in, in spades. What's the most important lesson you would have learned from us? Oh, basically, work work hard. Um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty uh, simple and common um, uh, lesson to learn, I think, in harness racing. And, it, it, you know, harness racing, it's not an easy life, um, as a lot of people know. And um, if you're not willing to, to work hard and put the hours in and be dedicated um, to your horses, then you, you're not going to get the results that, uh, that you, you're going to strive for. So uh, no, my dad, he's just been um, an absolute inspiration as far as work goes. And he, he has a, an ethic, a work ethic, you know, second to none. He's still keeping an eye on his son? Yeah, that's right. No, he's uh, still out at the stables uh, pretty much every morning, um, you know, keeping an eye on things. And uh, yeah, probably rolls his eyes at me if I'm not doing things the way he would uh, on occasions. But uh, yeah, it's great to have your support. Greg, we often forget about the strength of South Australian racing going back a couple of decades or so. The Lance Justice, his brother John, of course, the Sugars family, Jeff Webster, all great names in harness racing, eventually went to the other side when the grass was greener. Yeah, that's right. Um, obviously, well, well before my time, um, uh, you know, South Australia probably had as strong a um, industry as in, nearly anywhere else in, in Australia. And um, over time, it was uh, an unfortunate uh, steady decline and where it got to the stage where it's pretty hard to... Um, make a make a career out of it and yeah as those those names you've just mentioned all sort of had to move um elsewhere and um predominantly obviously all those guys went to victoria and uh and i've all done a really really good job so it uh, just shows the the caliber of horsemen that um that south australia has produced over many many years is is quite high and um it's great to see that you know they've all sort of gone on and done a good job elsewhere should also mention your sister Kylie also does a wonderful job. Yeah, that's right. No, she's um, she's hands on with us. She she works for Jess and I, and uh, and trains a few of her own herself. And um, yeah, she she's really uh, got my father's work ethic uh, installed into her as well. She's a, a terrific worker. She's there every day, rain, hail or shine, and and her attention to detail with her horses uh, is you know second to none. Greg, you had ready-made role models, but apart from the Sugars family, who else was in a big influence on your career? Um, well, I'd have to say early days, um, you know, being a bit of a rival too, uh, Jeff Webster was a great one to learn off when I was uh, competing in early days in Adelaide, but um, my idol in the sport was always Gavin Lang, and um, you know it was uh, sad, sad to lose him, um, as we did uh, a year or so ago now, but um, I was very fortunate enough over the last sort of decade or so to, to be obviously competing alongside him on a daily basis and uh, got to become terrific friends with him and um, yeah for me he's uh, he's the greatest rival we've, we've seen and all I've seen and um, yeah it was an honour to, to get to know him. I'm not surprised with that answer Greg because I watch you drive and I've watched you over a number of years now very reminiscent of Gavin's style. Yeah that's um that's a pretty high compliment. That's as, as good as it gets for me, so I appreciate that. Um, it's sort of not something, um, you know, I didn't go out there to sort of be a copycat or, or you know, um, 
try to replicate him, but um, certainly a lot of the chats I've had along the way and uh, I've, with Gavin have certainly, um, you know, given me a, a, a probably a, a different outlook on, on the sport that I may have may not have had um, without those uh, those discussions along the way. So, yeah, if I can uh, at the end of my career, if I can be held anywhere near the same regard as what he was, geez, that would be a dream come true. Well, Greg, we're just about now into the Miracle Mile Carnival full tilt. What can we expect from the Jess Tubbs and Greg Sugars combination? Uh, we got a two-year-old filly up here that unfortunately the race was cancelled the other night at Penrith, so we um, we're sort of hoping she can get a start in the pink bonnet. Um, and we've got better Eclipse here tonight. Obviously, looking uh, to try and get a spot in the Chariots of Fire and Triple Eight. He's our here's our main act. Um, he, he's uh, looking at coming up here next week for the uh, Newcastle Mile and then, and then the sprints to uh, hopefully get a berth in the Miracle Mile. Um, yeah, he's racing in terrific form late, but um, certainly no uh, easy assignment to make your way into a race like that. So. Uh, it's just an honour to be a part of the series, really. Of course, you return to your club and angle after what's been an outstanding period of racing in Victoria. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, just a yeah, terrific um, carnival we've had down in Victoria. Um, yeah, a lot of good races and um, a lot of good juveniles coming through the ranks, which uh, is really exciting, um, you know, for the future of harness racing, um, not only in Victoria, but obviously the future carnivals uh, uh, here in New South Wales and probably in Queensland too. I think you can see a lot of the Victorians travel and uh, and do quite well. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it, it's an exciting time in harness racing. Well, great to catch up with you and looking forward to you applying your skills here at Club and Angle over the next few weeks. Thank you very much.